Welcome once again to Fantasy Fiction Focus. We're here today with Susie Vidori in Calgary. How are you? I'm great, Simon. Good evening. Yeah, good evening to you too. Now, uh, you, of course, are the author of The Fountain. Now, I actually have here a copy of The Fountain, this lovely book by you. Uh, now, uh, you're a first-time writer, of course. Now, so um, this is the first book. And now, when did this come out? When did it, when did it come out? Uh, this book was just released in December of 2015, so just about a month ago. Oh. So now you're not, as far as I know, you're not a, a, a writer by trade, of course. I mean, not a fiction writer. So can you tell us a little bit before we talk about the book? What's your sort of journey as a writer? What were you, uh, what's your experience, I suppose, that before all this happened to you? Absolutely. I've always loved to write. Um, I didn't always know that I would become a professional writer. But uh, I've always done a lot of business writing in my career. This particular novel, I actually started writing a little bit of it in my teens, or actually probably my tweens when I was about 10 or 11. And a germ of the novel. Now, the, what's come out of it is quite different. The one that I wrote at the time was about 10, 11, 12-year-olds. And this book is about 16-year-olds. And very, very little of the plot uh, still exists, but that's when I started the idea um, for the fountain. Now, you, you of course, were a writer of other things. I mean, you weren't just coming to this like you'd never written anything much before. You've done business writing, corporate stuff, uh, for a long business planning. So you do know your way around the English language and punctuation and things, right? Definitely, definitely. I've done business writing my entire career. Um, and for the last 10 years, I've done a lot of copywriting, not as my primary job, but I do it for um, companies' websites and I do it uh, for press releases and things like that. So absolutely business writing. Um, it's a lot of fun and uh, gave me a lot of bit of practice. And then when I turned to fiction writing, it was all kind of right there. So it was, a, it was an easy transition. Yeah, I would think so. You've got the background, you've got the experience. I mean, but it, it is obviously very different. I would imagine obviously you've got to create a story. Was it a real challenge to make that leap into, into fiction? Uh, I would say that it wasn't a challenge to start writing fiction. It was certainly new to me to learn how to structure a novel. And I had a lot of help along the way from lots of writers. Uh, the Calgary community is extremely welcoming and they were very helpful. I had some really great mentors along the way. And so once I kind of got the hang of the structure of it, uh, it all kind of came together. Now, well, okay, well, tell it now. Tell us about. We have to know about the fountain. The fountain. What is this book about? Obviously, it's about a fountain. I would imagine. I don't know what. What's it about? Well, this particular book, the fountain, is on the premise that you better be careful what you wish for because it just might come true. So Ava is sixteen years old. She moves from San Francisco to um, to New England to attend a boarding school called St. Augustus, where her mother had attended and her mother died when she was 10. So she wants to learn a little bit more about her mom and, and a little bit about her family history. And she gets there and her reputation has preceded her because her family had been involved in the school and she meets some girls who aren't really very nice. And a lot of horrible things happen to Ava. She has a really tough first week and she runs into the woods near the, near the school and she comes across a fountain and she throws a coin into the fountain and she wishes that this one girl, Courtney is her name, goes away. And she does. And so this book is a really neat story about Ava's journey to right this wrong that she's done because she's made somebody disappear and all the consequences and, and differences in uh, school life without this one person and it's Ava's journey to try to right that wrong. It's a romance, it's a mystery, uh, it was a lot of fun to write and uh, it's a lot of fun to read. Now, this is obviously a YA novel, so presumably it's for the YA audience. But adults are probably reading this too, are they? I mean, obviously they did with Harry Potter and, and, and things, and YA is read by adults. Are they reading this one too? I am finding that it is being read by adults. Like I said, it's only been out a month. Um, it's being read by teens and tweens. Um, but the sort of 40 something year old moms are reading it too. And they're, you know, the feedback is, I love this book. Um, and I've also had quite a few uh, men read it as well. And, and uh, they're enjoying the story as well. I think it's a really widely appealing, it's a situation, yes, she's 16, but she's in a really adult situation where something 
really terrible has happened and everybody would think she was crazy if she went around telling people that this wish had happened and so she really has to handle it on her own and I think a lot of people can identify uh, with that and the struggles that Ava has to right this wrong that she's done so now was there any uh, any of your own uh, um, uh, life history that inspired you with this did you go to a a, a fancy school and, and and meet mean girls in your childhood no, I didn't. I didn't at all. And and as I mentioned, I started writing the germ of the novel. And the germ of the novel was that it was a not necessarily a fancy school, but a boarding school. And um, when I was younger, I loved reading stories about boarding schools. There's lots of them out there. Uh, Libba Bray or uh, Gordon Corman, those types of stories. And I love the idea that you have no parents, which is the premise of most young adult novels, um, but that you can sneak in and out of the dorm and you can kind of get away with lots of things at a, at a boarding school. And so, and so that's the only thing that's the same. Um, but the the um, the book is actually, I live in Calgary, but the book is actually set in New England, which is um, somewhere near Boston. They're about an, uh, an hour away from Boston in this story. And I actually went to elementary school in Boston. And so that was really kind of fun for me to write because that's where I uh, I lived as a as a child. So. So there is some personal connection there. I thought there must be because I, I knew you weren't from Calgary. You're sort of from that sort of Nova Scotia, Atlantic. Canada and everything. So, so uh, is there a, a theme in this or a message in this that uh, that teens will be able to identify with, whether or not they've been to boarding school or not? Just through their school years, through this 15, 16 year old age range, is there stuff in there that people will really connect with? Oh, absolutely. I think the main. I wouldn't call it a moral, it's nothing that strong, but I think the main themes around it are to take responsibility for your actions and to really own your choices in life and and drive your own way um i am a mom i have three kids and um there there are some not heavy-handed lessons but certainly some themes in there um that i would want kids today to to be able to read and to really take that ownership of their own lives and to understand that actions and consequences um and so ava is a very strong protagonist and she makes choices along the way and some of them are good choices and some of them aren't so good choices but all the way along she needs to own those choices and figure out how to make it work uh, and how to live with them and so um it doesn't always turn out the way that she expects and uh and i think the book certainly doesn't um turn out all the way along there's lots of twists and turns and uh and i think that's what keeps especially the older audience pretty interested uh uh, there's lots of fun surprises and and uh, turns along the way. Now you just mentioned you have, you have three children, of course, and they're not they're not that old, of course. So you must be a very busy person all the time, and you have a, you have a secret identity with a real job and everything. So how when do you find time to actually do any writing? Um, that's a really good question. It's probably the number one question um, that came up with especially friends and family and those who know me when this book was published, they were all very surprised. Like, when did you write a book? Uh, I really, it's something I love to do and it's something that I do make time for. The first draft of The Fountain, I actually wrote well on maternity leave with my third child, uh, but I've continued on. I write evenings, I write weekends. I have an extremely supportive family that allows me that time, but I do work full time uh, and I do have a lot of fun with my kids as well but yeah i just have to set aside the time and you just have to have the discipline to keep going um but the ideas keep flowing and and so you gotta get them down so when once you'd finish this book of course i mean you you obviously thought well, okay it's done now i'm happy with it uh you're gonna try and get it published um uh, but you the, the book is published with a smaller a local press uh, and I believe that from our some of our conversations, you'd been uh, a while ago. You talked about getting agents and getting a large publisher involved, and maybe even self-publishing. You'd done all those things. So, so what what was the um, process with that? When did you sort of decide? Well, just guide us through that, I suppose. And what, what once you'd finished it, what were your thoughts? And 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 then you ended up in the place you're in now. Sure, absolutely. That's been quite the journey, and. Um, again, I mentioned the Calgary writing community. I think just speaking to so many people and having so many supportive people help me and find the right place for my book. Um, it's a bit of a different book. And one of the main reasons is because I'm Canadian and the book is set in the US, it doesn't fit into all of the publishing 
um, ways. I did have some opportunities with some larger publishers and that was really exciting too, but I was really to, ready to get that book out. I do have quite a strong background in promotions and things and, and uh, had some ideas about how to get it out there. And so I actually came across Evil Alter Ego Press, um, which has been amazing. They are absolutely the perfect press for me. Um, they are a very small press. This is the only, their third book that they've put out. And, uh, but really great group of, of, really great group of writers and um, editors that help the book get to where it is today. And what's neat about them is that they can put all their support behind my book and the other two books that they have out there. And so it's been a really neat experience, I think, with my blend of um, marketing and promotional abilities. It's been a lot of fun for all of us um, to be able to do that. But I don't really, I, you're right, uh, at one point I did consider self-published as well, which I think is a totally valid route to go. Uh, for me, because of my time constraints and the fact that I do have other pursuits and, and very um, limited time, learning the publishing business was not something that was really high on my priority list. So they're the experts. Um, they came with all the editing, cover design, all those things, and they did a wonderful job. I'm really pleased with it. And uh, now we're moving together and it's been an amazing partnership to get this book out there and get it read. And uh, so it's been really fun. Well, yes, I think some people, I think, uh, as we have probably said before, they, they're not aware of or not prepared to do all the marketing that, they, that they're going to have to do with a book, whether it's self-published or not. I mean, even large publishers want them to do a lot of their own marketing and things now. Now, obviously, you have that background, which helps. Uh, not many people do. They don't have the marketing background and written a book. They've got one or the other. But you did a book launch, which I was very happy to be and delighted to be invited to, and that went quite well, as far as I could tell. Good turnout and everything. Uh, just before Christmas. Uh, but uh, how, are, how are things progressing? Is, is, is the book's obviously out there now in, in 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 amazon land and in bookstores and things and are you doing events locally absolutely so it's been it's been a lot of fun um to plan this and yes i do have marketing experience but not marketing books experience and so um it's been a lot of fun to find out all the different opportunities that are out there and i'm trying to do as many as i can just to see what's going to work for me um and for my particular book and yeah, I'm going to do signings. I have three signings lined up in the next six weeks with Indigo. Um, I've done readings at Owl's Nest Books here in Calgary. Uh, I did have a pretty big launch party and that was really something I wanted to do um, because we've been talking about this book for so long with so many people that it was really neat. Uh, it was about 100 people and um, you know, some drinks and some fun and lots of book sales and uh, just a really neat night for me to be able to celebrate uh, the launch of the fountain and get it out there. So that's been a lot of fun and starting to get reviews. And so far, um, everything is, is going really well. I'm really pleased uh, that people love the book. And so that's been really exciting for me because I love the book. Um, but to have it out there and to be read by strangers and reviewers and getting some press is really exciting. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun a month in, and uh, I can't wait to see where it's going to go. Now, you mentioned the writing community and how wonderful it's, it's been, very supportive and things like that. But obviously, with you coming in sort of from the outside, you know, you've obviously you, you, you've come into the writing community, and now you're very much a part of it. Uh, is it important, do you think, in your lo anybody's local community, a city or a small town, is it important to be part of the local scene and, and, and know people and, 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 and everything? I think it's been extremely beneficial for me. Everybody has their own strategy. Uh, for me, I wouldn't have probably met half of the contacts that I met in order to get this book published. Uh, I wouldn't have as many great ideas on the table for marketing. I wouldn't have access to so many great mentors uh, if I hadn't been involved. Um, I joined um, an organization called When Words Collide, which is a festival here in Calgary for readers and writers about three and a half years ago. So I've planned um, three festivals with them so far. And that's been really exciting because I have taken what used to be a couple of hours of young adult programming and turned that into an entire track for the entire weekend of young adults. And so what I've managed to do, which has been a lot of fun doing it, and I didn't do it on purpose, but I've created a support network for myself of young adult authors um, and for others as well. 
uh, but one that I, di I didn't see existing when I started down this path a few years ago. And so that's been really beneficial for myself. And yes, I think that um, lots of authors could benefit from reaching out. I think that um, many people are shy or scared to share their writing, at least at first, to find out what people think. Um, but what I found was just overwhelming support and openness to uh, assist in any way possible. And so, yeah, I've been really excited about that. I'm not sure if that same experience exists across Canada or across North America. Uh, I'd like to think it does, but certainly here in the Calgary community, that support is alive and well, and I'm really grateful for it. So it's been fun. Yeah, because, I mean, obviously these people come, they, they, uh, you see a, a lot of familiar faces at book launches and, and events and things, and I think it's great because obviously writing is by it has to be it's a solitary activity for fiction especially so you have to live inside your own head and, and and create this stuff and so you have to get out sometimes and you realize there are other people who are going through exactly the same things uh as you so um i have to ask of course here is there a sequel to the fountain yes or, there will I, be there will be a sequel um actually there'll be a prequel and i, I don't necessarily want to use that term um but the book the next book in the series it will be a trilogy the next book in the series is actually the year before this book. And so the, the girl, Courtney, that I mentioned earlier that is wished away and disappears, um, this is her story of how she became who she is and how she became the person that Ava just couldn't stand. And so it's a, it's a story about how her transition from everyday 15-year-old girl um, to where she was when Ava met her at that point in time. And that's the story. It wasn't necessarily the story I had planned to tell second, um, but that's the number one story that readers wanted to hear about after reading The Fountain is, what is with that girl? Like, why was she like that? And so I felt I really needed to explain uh, where she came from, because of course I know why she's like that. Now everybody else will know too. So it's kind of a neat, uh, it's a neat little story and it will come out later in 2016. So, so how, how far advanced is it? Is it, is it done already? No, it's about half done, I'd say. About half done and uh, working on it all the time. So, Are you working on anything else as well or are you going to live in Ava and Fountainland for the next you know, decade? I think, I, as I mentioned, it will be a trilogy, um, but I'm also working on another um, book for adults, actually, and it's a psychological thriller. And so at times when this book is out for edits and I can't do anything else, uh, I don't want to touch it or have to work on something else. I do have another project. It's coming along slowly because now that uh, this one's come out and I have some deadlines for the second book, it's certainly on the back burner with everything else going on in my life. But uh, that's a, that's going to be a really neat book too. And uh, I enjoy the mystery aspects of it and the, and the puzzle pieces of, of putting that one together. And so it's been a lot of fun and that'll be out probably at some point after we finish the Fountain Trilogy. Is this in a, a, a similar sort of theme to it? Like, uh, of, uh, obviously, is it, is it, well, first of all, is, is it another, another YA book? No, it will not be a YA book. It, it's a, for adults, no. Oh, sorry, yeah, you might have mentioned that. So yeah, it, it, you know what, the premise, about premise that? I, I think, and that's what's kind of funny, is, is sometimes you have to write what it is that's, that's come to you. Um, and the germ of that idea, um, really, I, I I kind of wrestled with it for a couple of months trying to force it into a YA world and it just wasn't. Um, so I just accepted that I'm going to, you know, <laughs> now that I've built a community of young adult, uh, I'll be publishing a book at some point that isn't young adult. And uh, so I guess I'll have to go build a community there to, uh, <laughs> to support the launch of that book or the, the completion of that book. But um, yeah, no, it'll be for adults. Now, I suppose we should ask, because you're obviously uh, new to this, but obviously you've taken to this world and this life, of, uh, I suppose, uh, quite quite quickly and quite well and everything. Do you have any advice for uh, aspiring people who are, are just starting out? I, I think along the same themes, don't be afraid to reach out for help um, because it is something, yes, I came into this with quite a strong writing background or business writing background, but there's so many nuances of of writing fiction that aren't in a book. Um, well, actually you've written some some good uh, how to write fiction type books. I don't know if you wanna talk about those, but, um, but there are some out there, but there's some things that you really can't get until 
some advice that you really can't get until people read your work. And so let people read your work and let them read it early and let them read it often. I mean, anybody that will read it, let them read it because um, they can help. And it certainly makes your book much stronger. So. No, I don't think you don't really know if your book's any good at all until somebody actually looks at it who doesn't know you. I think a lot of people, uh, they, they, you know, their friends and family and people, they read their work and they, oh, yeah, everyone loves my my book. Well, yeah, but you need to send, not even just to a publisher, you need to send it to someone who doesn't know who you are. So they'll give you an honest opinion, I think, a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's absolutely true, Simon. And that's what I've experienced, at least in the first month is yes there's friends and family and you you feel like it's really good but to see those reviews up there from strangers and from professional reviewers and book bloggers and you know all those positive reviews for the fountain is really thrilling because you think oh you know what i thought it was good and it is good and that's that's i mean you're not going to please everyone all the time but um to have that kind of response in the first month i i feel good about that so so what's your favorite part of this whole thing been so far? Do you have a favorite part uh, of this uh, of this journey so far? I actually enjoy the writing. <laughs> I enjoy writing. Um, you mentioned earlier that it's a solitary activity. Um, that isn't the part that I necessarily like about it. I'm probably not your um, typical writer. So you mentioned I actually don't need that solitary time. I think for me, I'm almost the opposite. I'm an extrovert. I've got so many ideas and everything else that not anybody on this planet wants to absorb all of what I am thinking all the time. And so I need an outlet for that. And so I end up writing it. But I enjoy the writing aspect of it. Um, and the rest of it all comes along with it. And the fact that you could share that writing um, just means that I get to write more. So that's the piece that I like the best. And the least favorite part would be what? Anything in particular? I think the time frames in the writing world and the, the fact that you need to be patient. So the first draft, um, what I would call the first completed draft that I was shopping around has been done for two and a half, three years. Uh, and that's another reason actually why I did choose, you asked me earlier about different publishers. Um, to go with a traditional publisher takes a long time. Uh, it takes a long time to get your book in front of them if you if you're lucky enough to do so um, and even after they accept a book it might be years before it's published and so it's it's a I'm not a particularly patient person and so I think that's the part that I like the least about the whole writing industry is is the waiting um, I think for most people, it'll probably be the writing. I mean, and, and, and perhaps the worst part about it is the constant marketing you have to do. Is, is It gets a bit tiresome at times. And some people really hate the editing. I don't particularly mind the editing because the editing is, is necessary. It, 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 it's annoying when I suppose you've read the same book five times in the same week and you keep get, keep finding a punctuation error or so you've written you know you've got the word the twice or something uh, it's, it's irritating but it is something that has to be done i suppose so so yeah so so you're, you're obviously enjoying this it's, the book's doing well where where can people get this this lovely book of yours uh good question it is available absolutely pretty much anywhere online that you can buy books um it's available in both paperback and ebook form uh amazon Kobo, indigo.ca, Barnes and Noble, you name it, you can order it. Um, it is available and it will be available at several bookstores slowly. And that's the piece that you're talking about, the marketing and the distribution and working on that. So I'm working on that slowly. It's available at several um, Indigo chapters in Calgary, as well as Owl's Nest Books and working on some, some other places to buy it. And um, yeah. So there's no excuse for people not to buy this book then, really. Exactly, exactly. Well, hopefully they will. I'd like to thank you very much for being with us today. It's been wonderful chatting to you and catching up and finding out what's going on. Uh, all the best with this book. Looking forward to seeing the second one. I have read the first one, uh, but of course I haven't read the second one because I'm just as intrigued as everyone else, perhaps, to know what happens next uh, in, in this particular saga, in this particular world. So thanks for being with us, and we'll, uh, we'll look forward to hearing more from you as time progresses. Thank you, Simon.